Welcome to Datong, a city in uh, the north of Shanxi province, really close to the border of Inner Mongolia. Datong was on the northern frontier of early imperial China, and after numerous conflicts with the nomadic tribes to the north, it eventually fell to the Torba clan, who made Datong the capital of their northern Wei empire in the 4th century. Also the western capital of the 12th century Jin dynasty, Datong and its surroundings retain many treasures. And welcome to the Yungan Grottoes. The main draw to this part of China are the Yungan Grottoes, about 30 minutes outside of the city. What you're looking at now, as wonderful as it is, are actually not the highlights of the grottoes. Those places cannot be filmed or photographed, so you're just going to have to take my word for it that they really make the trip up here worthwhile. The Yungan grottoes were constructed in the 5th century during the Northern Wei Dynasty, and along with the Morgao grottoes and the Longmen grottoes, I'm going to provide links to those, these three are the grandest and most famous Buddhist grottoes anywhere in China. Personally, having visited all three of them, I think this was the most spectacular of the three. There are over 50,000 statues here, several of which were built on a gigantic scale. So the city wall in Datong that we're on right now is brand spanking new. It was built about 10 years ago um, in the style of the old wall. A lot of things in Datong have been rebuilt in recent years, as we will see later. Most of the city was rebuilt, in fact, in the last 10 years or so, um, to try to make it into a, you know, a draw card place like Xi'an, where I live, for example. I'm not sure if they succeeded. Let's go and have a look. And welcome to Huayen Monastery in the city of Datong. Pretty famous place, this. Uh, some proper architectural wonders here. Let's go and have a look. The Daxiong Bao Hall of Huayan Monastery was built in 1062 and renovated in 1122. This Liao and Jin dynasty building is the largest wooden religious building anywhere in China. Measuring 53 meters across the front, the approach to the building is awesome. So as with a lot of kind of famous temples and monasteries in China, there's often uh, one or two very old, magnificent buildings. And then there's a load of other kind of new build stuff, which I don't really care about, but you know, you've got to filter through that first. <laughs> there are a number of other ancient buildings here in Huayan Monastery. And if you do visit, you should also pay a trip to the Sutra Repository Hall built in 1038. The 38 sutra cabinets that cover the walls inside are masterpieces of small-scale Chinese woodwork. No videos or photos in here, however. Sorry. So this behind me is the five dragon screen just outside of Shanghua Temple in the city of Datong. Uh, there are several of these in the city. Um, this is one of the more famous ones. It's been here since the Ming Dynasty. It was built in 1560. There are not many Liao Dynasty uh, wooden temple buildings left anywhere in China. There's only a handful. Um, the majority of them being here in Datong, and they are they are vast. They were kind of famous as a dynasty for um, for building on the larger scale. There's another very famous building I'm going to take you to maybe tomorrow. It's a little bit outside of the city of Datong. It's about 70k away, uh, which is their greatest feat of engineering. I'm looking forward to it. Shanhua Temple was my favourite place in the city of Datong. Ancient and quiet, the complex contains a main hall and pavilion dating to the 11th century Liao dynasty and several other buildings from the 12th century Jin dynasty. So quiet and peaceful here, except for the birds, which is nice there. It's pretty spectacular, you know, the fact that these wooden buildings are actually still here, they're almost a thousand years old, is in itself unbelievable for a city which has, you know, been laid waste to several times. <laughs> um, you know, there's a reason why there are not many wooden buildings, old wooden buildings left in the world, because they burn down. As much as I would love to show you inside these big holes, I can't because you're not allowed to film or photograph in there for obvious reasons. So you have to just take my word for it 
they are pretty spectacular. Obviously that means you have to just buy a ticket to Datong and come and visit yourself. <laughs> so the Liao Dynasty. They were originally people from the steppe. They were nomadic people, outsiders to the Han Chinese world, who came to control a huge, huge amount of northern China. They were called the Kitan people, uh, which is actually where the old English word for China, cafe, comes from. It comes from that word Kitan. One of the reasons that we, we use this name is because you're talking about around the time when European travellers, just before Marco Polo, um, started to obviously come to China. And therefore the first people that they would meet would be the Kitan people coming through northern China. There are only a handful of nine dragon walls in China, and this is the oldest and the largest. Built in 1392 during the Ming Dynasty, the screen wall was in front of the palace of Zhu Gui, the son of the emperor. Nine dragon walls were built only for imperial palaces, the number nine being the number associated with the emperor. This is an amazing site, and if you're in Datong, it should not be missed. Only one problem here, the endless loudspeaker messages. Number one, pet peeve in China. Loudspeakers everywhere, ruining your experience at any place you visit. <sighs> Super cool. Seen a few of these. There's a couple of these in Beijing, in Beihai Park, and uh, one in the Forbidden City. Nine dragon screens. This is the oldest and the biggest in China. Superb. All right, let's move. That is amazing. Truly one of the best things I think I've could ever I've ever seen in China. Spectacular. Why? Why? <laughs> There's another five dragon screen, not glazed like the others. This is a little bit later as well. This is Qing Dynasty. It's built in the 1700s. Lovely. So I'm not really sure how I feel about this city, to be honest. Um, it hasn't grabbed me like some places do. But there are some amazing things to see in it. And in the surrounding countryside, there are endless amazing things. You know, you're talking about you're close to the Great Wall. Obviously, there's the Yungang, Yungang Grottoes, which are world famous. Um, Hongshan, Taishan, famous mountains. It's, yeah, but the, the city itself, I don't know, it just seems a bit... Well, it is, it's all been rebuilt recently. And it's got a bit of a Disneyland kind of feel to it. Which again, I, I don't know, for some people, maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing, but it's just not my, not my cup of tea. All right, I'm gonna finish this video just as I started it up on the city wall of Datong. If you have any questions at all about travel here or things to do, please just drop me a message. Uh, I will get back to you. It's been a good day. It's been a long day, I've done 50,000 steps, and tomorrow I'm off to climb a mountain. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Take care, goodbye.